a dark and twisted true story. For many years, I have always loved Burger King. But on the night of October 31st, my opinion changed. I had just started working the third shift, which I really didn't mind because at least I didn't have a dick of a manager breathing down my neck. My fellow employee, Ashton, was the only other person working that night, but he had just taken a break and was watching some YouTube channel called Dark and Twisted that he was addicted to. Anyways, the clock had just struck 3 a.m. when this man entered the building and approached the counter. Welcome to Burger King. What can I get for you tonight? But he just stood there in complete silence. And the creepy part about it was, he was just staring and smiling at me. And his eyes were unblinking. So I repeated myself, Welcome to Burger King. What can I get for you tonight? Then he finally opened his mouth to speak. But nothing could have prepared me for what this creepy man was about to say. I would like to order brains. Excuse me, I asked. Brains. I want brains. Would you like them on a sesame seed bun? I asked sarcastically because I thought he was just joking. I looked over at Ashton, and he was just smirking as well. No, he said firmly. I don't like them on bread. Just plain and bloody. I continued to play along. Anything to drink with your brains, I asked jokingly. Yes, blood, he said. Ashton. Could you please make this gentleman one order of brains and a cup of blood, I said. We were used to getting pranksters that time of night, so we didn't think anything of it. Sorry, we are fresh out of brains and blood, said Ashton, trying his best to hold in his laughter. Hmm, that's too bad, because now, I have to eat your brains and drink your blood. Who's first, said the man as he pulled out a knife and started to walk around the counter. Holy shit's nitzel sticks. What the hell is your problem, buddy? I said. Then me and Ashton made a run for it and hid from the man. Ashton got a brilliant idea to toss his cell phone into the freezer while I called it from mine, tricking the man to thinking we were hiding inside. Once he was inside, we quickly shut the door, locking him in. When the cops finally arrived, they found out that the man was an actual cannibal and he suffered from mental illness. That was the last time I ever worked the night shift. My name is Logan. I work at a small bar that's located near a wooded area. One night while on my cigarette break, I heard something near the tall pine trees that stood nearby. I didn't really think anything of it because 
being located near the woods, we got all types of animals that wandered around the building. My fellow employee named Drake had just joined me for a smoke as we talked about random stuff to kill the time. And that's when we heard the sound again. But this time, it was closer. Did you hear that? I asked. Yes, he replied. It's probably just an animal, he said. Five minutes had passed and we had just turned around and started to walk back inside when all of a sudden we heard growling right behind us. And there it was, a large creature that had the head of a dog or wolf, but it was standing on its hind legs and was at least seven feet tall. Its eyes were yellow and glowing like two headlights in the darkness. Its teeth were sharp and bloody, as if it had just eaten something or someone. Drake, whatever you do, don't run. Then it started to slowly step toward us as I could feel my legs trembling beneath me. Holy ass of a Kardashian, I said, as we both stepped backwards slowly towards the door. We quickly ran inside and locked the door. When they searched the grounds, they told us it was probably a wolf or a dog. Later that night, when I got off of work, I got into my pickup truck and headed home. But that was not the last time I saw the dog man. A dark and twisted true story. Being a janitor of a school was not the funnest thing in the world. Crappy pay and cleaning up vomit was not my idea of a great job. One day, I and a fellow janitor were at the lower level of the school, stocking the janitor's workstation when an announcement came over the speaker. It was the principal as she announced a school lockdown. I quickly grabbed a large flashlight for a weapon as Jack grabbed a screwdriver. Then we hid as we waited for the announcement that the coast was clear. The screams of the children upstairs was indication that this was more serious than we thought. Then the door opened as we heard something creeping down the stairs slowly. All I could think of was some crazy gunman had entered the school. No need for us to be scared, said Jack. There are two of us against one of him. Let's Floyd Mayweather his ass on the count of three. Are you nuts? Have you been smoking something green and fuzzy? Or something dark and twisted, I said. He probably has a gun, while we have only a screwdriver and a flashlight. Then a set of yellow glowing eyes appeared out of the darkness. And the fangs in his mouth was indication that this was no human unless he had one fucked up dentist. As it slowly pushed its way through the shadows, there it was, an all black wolf that looked as if it was hungry for human flesh. At that moment, I almost pooped and peed my pants. Oh shiggity shit, I said. Somehow, 
I got up enough nerve to throw my flashlight, hitting the wolf in the head as we took off up the stairs, locking the animal down there. Moments later, wildlife arrived and captured the wolf. Our school was located a mile from a wooded area. Thank God no one was hurt. This proves that not all lockdowns are due to crazy gunmen, but also to four-legged creatures as well. A dark and twisted true story. I was new to the Snapchat platform and wasn't sure how it really worked. I knew I would end up making stupid mistakes in the beginning, but the biggest mistake was on the night of July 2nd. I received a notification that someone wanted to be friends with me. Not even knowing who it was, I stupidly accepted. Who is this? I said. I actually go to your school and I think you are hot and very sexy. All of my friends think you are adorable as well. So I said, thank you. Who are you and what do you look like? I'm Chloe. Some people say I look like Kylie Jenner. I'll send you a photo in a little while, she said. Then we signed off. A few hours later, I received a notification and it was her again. Here is a picture of me. I hope you don't find me ugly, she said. And when I saw her photo, I could not believe how beautiful she was. She did look a lot like Kylie Jenner. Meet me in the park tomorrow night, she said. I will be wearing an all red dress so you notice me. Okay, it's a date, I replied. Then we signed off and I went to bed. The next day, I was so excited to see her in person, so I got there a little early and waited. I decided to watch some new dark and twisted to pass the time. Hi there, said a voice as my eyes slowly shifted upward. Um, can I help you? I asked. Then the person just sat down next to me, just smiling at me. What's wrong? Don't you recognize me? Um, no, I replied. I'm Chloe from Snapchat. You know, the one who looks like Kylie Jenner. You don't look like Kylie Jenner. More like Bruce Jenner with the bags of Hillary Clinton around your eyes. Get the hell away from me, I yelled. Well, sometimes people look different in person. I could easily tell it was a man dressed like a woman, and a very ugly woman at that. He did not look like Kylie Jenner, but he did look familiar. Then it dawned on me. It was the janitor from my school. I swear to God, if you come any closer, I'm gonna slap the spirit out of your body. I'm leaving. Listen here, you little shit. If you move one inch, I'm going to use this gun that's in my purse. You're coming home with me, he said, as he removed his gun from his purse, threatening me with it. Luckily, there was park security that noticed the gun in his hand. And luckily, he had noticed the man from a wanted poster. 
the man was immediately arrested and my life had been spared. From that day on, I was very careful on Snapchat. A dark and twisted true story. One night, I decided to visit this new thing called the Deep Web. There was this chat room called Predict When You Die. And the only thing on the page was a button that said, click for access to your camera. Me being the daring type, I clicked it without even thinking twice. And that's when an old woman appeared on the screen. She was dressed in all black and appeared to be some sort of psychic. Even though I was creeped out, I didn't click away. She told me to pay $250 now, and if she was right with her prediction, I'd pay the rest immediately after. Then a screen appeared, asking for my credit card. Fuck that, I said. I told her that I didn't feel comfortable giving out my credit card information. But she told me that it would be wise for me to do so unless I didn't want to find out how I die tomorrow. She went on to say, if I found out how I die, then I can prevent it from happening. She did have a point, but all of this was freaking me out, so I panicked turned off my computer and went to bed. An hour later, I was awakened by my computer, which had turned on by itself. And on the screen was the same old lady, just sitting there, staring deeply into her camera. It was almost as if her computer screen was a window that led to my bedroom. Stupidly, I raised myself out of my bed, sat down at my desk, and paid the payment. I asked her to tell me now, how was I going to die? All she said was, do not walk to school tomorrow. Why not, I asked. Because that's how you die. How do I know this is real? But then the computer went black and the chat ended. I wasn't going to listen to some crazy old lady. Plus, there was a very important test at school the next day that I could not miss. So I called it a night and went to bed. The next morning while I was walking to school, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, came an all-black car speeding toward me from behind. I jumped out of the way just in the nick of time as the car sped past me and down the road into the distance. A week had went by and I was watching the news across the screen flashed a picture of the same old lady. Come to find out, she had scammed many people, and I was one of them. She was the one driving that car that tried to hit me. She had planned the entire thing. But from that day forward, I never visited the deep web ever again. A dark and twisted true story.
I had just moved to New Orleans and had just purchased an old, beautiful, historic house for an unbelievably low price. One night, I heard a knock at my door. It was a creepy old woman from across the street. She introduced herself, handed me a pie that she had baked to welcome me into the neighborhood. But before she left, she said, Be careful. Be very careful. Then she left. Later that night, during a powerful thunderstorm, I decided to watch season two, episode five of My Girlfriend Wants to Kill Me from Dark and Twisted that I enjoyed. All of a sudden, there was a man just standing outside of my window. But when I ran out to see who it was, he was gone. Later that night, as I slept, I was awakened by a slamming door, followed by a deep, evil giggle echoing throughout the house. The door that had slammed was my bedroom door. Holy fiery balls of Satan, I said to myself. This was scarier than Trump's hair. I tried to open the door, but to no avail. It was as if someone or something had a grip on the other side of the doorknob, trying to keep me inside. Then the walls began to tremble and drip blood. I ran to the phone to call for help, but there was no dial tone, only heavy breathing. And I could feel and smell the horrid breath of the person on the other end. I tried to use my cell phone, but there was no reception. Ten seconds later, my bedroom door opened. It was the same man that was looking through my living room window. Leave now, or this house will kill you, just like it kills everyone who moves in here. Now get the fuck out. I didn't even pack my things. I ran the hell out of there, hopped in my car, sped off, and never looked back. A dark and twisted true story. There was this new kid named Billy that had just moved in to the neighborhood. He was very shy, quiet, and weird. He lived in the most creepiest house on our block. Rumor had it that a young girl had died there in a horrific freak accident. Anyways, me and my friend Tommy decided to look him up on Instagram. His Instagram was very weird where he posted pictures doing odd things and he was always with some creepy looking girl right next to him. Seeing that he was an only child, it wasn't his sister. So who was this mystery girl that had something dark and twisted about her? We decided to follow him on his Instagram and told him that we wanted to be friends. But our intentions was to only find out who the creepy girl was. We asked him if we could have a sleepover at his house. He said, yes. So there we were, spending the night, but there was no creepy girl in sight. 
We asked him if we could meet the creepy girl, but he ignored our question by asking us if we wanted to play video games. While we were playing, I could have sworn I seen someone outside the window watching us. But I didn't say anything because I just figured I was just seeing things. Later that night, as we slept, we heard something in the closet. Did you hear that? I said to Tommy. Yes, something in the closet knocking from the inside. Go check it out, I replied. Fuck that. This is one black guy that won't be the first to die in a horror movie. So I got up, walked slowly over to the closet, and grabbed the doorknob. Okay, I'm going to open it on the count of three. One, two, and three. And when I snatched the door open, we both screamed like little bitches. There she was, the creepy girl, her skin gray and clammy. So you think you can take advantage of my Billy, huh? Leave him alone, or I'm going to snatch your hearts out of your chests and shove them up both your and before she could finish we both ran the hell out of that house ran down the street and never looked back i swear on the dreads of little wayne this was the scariest moment of my life A dark and twisted true story. I was new to the whole online dating thing and I was scared shitless due to all of the horror stories that my overly paranoid friend Amanda told me about when it came to stuff like that. Anyways, after signing up to the new online dating site, Tinder, within 10 minutes, I had an alert that there was a perfect match for me. Her name was Sarah. To make a long story short, after about a month of getting to know one another by messaging, we set a date to finally meet at her house. Since my car was in the shop at the time, she offered to pick me up. As we arrived, a really creepy man opened the door. She introduced him as her father, which I thought was kind of weird. I said hello to him, but he just stared strangely at me, which creeped me out of course. Then he looked at her and said, Remember what I said. Then he left the room. Come in and have a seat, she said. As we sat down at the dining room table, the strange thing was there was only one meal on the table. So I asked her why she wasn't eating. But she made some lame excuse saying that she had already eaten. I was starved so I just dug in and started eating. You have a very nice mouth. I love the way you chew and swallow, she said. What the fuck kind of statement was that, I said to myself. Dessert time, she said as her father brought out a milkshake for me only. The straw had just touched my lips when I got a text message from my friend Amanda. Don't drink the milkshake, she said. What in the blaze? 
blazing bliggity blunts of Snoop Dogg are you talking about? Are you spying on me? Just don't drink it, she said. I made some sort of excuse up that I had to leave because my grandmother was in the hospital. But when I got to the door to leave, her father was blocking it with an angry look on his face. But you haven't finished your milkshake. Sit back down, he said. Look here, pal. Get the hell out of my way or I'm going to knock you back into your mother's womb, I said. I could feel Sarah creeping up behind me, so I kicked him in his little raisins and ran the hell out of there. And thank God Amanda was out front, so I hopped into her car and we sped off. Amanda explained that she didn't feel right about something, so she decided to follow me and spy on me with her binoculars. She said she saw Sarah's father in the kitchen putting poison in my milkshake. If it weren't for my good friend Amanda, I'd probably be dead. I guess Sarah's version of the song Milkshake was my milkshake brings all the boys to the graveyard. A dark and twisted true story. It was Friday night and I was drunk off my ass. I had been partying all night and just wanted to get home. So I called an Uber to come pick me up. When it arrived, I was just about to sit down, but there was a knife on the seat. Oh, could you please hand me that, said the driver. I was just about to cut my apple for lunch, so I handed it to her and sat down. I noticed a bad odor, but I tried to just ignore it as we started to chit chat about random stuff to pass the time. She seemed really nice and down to earth, but then, oddly, the conversation shifted from innocent how was your day stuff to how she had been done wrong by two many men and how she despised all men. She then started talking about how her ex was a total dickhead and how he was cheating on her. I was just happy that I was almost home. But then she told me she had to make a quick stop. She drove down a dark road, then into a graveyard. What are we doing here? I asked, but she ignored my question and resumed her talking about how she had to get rid of her boyfriend. But when I asked her where was her boyfriend, she said, he's dead. And where is the body? I asked. He's right behind you, inside of the trunk. And I need you to help me bury him. But first, we need to cut him up into pieces. Excuse me? What in the shiggity higgity hell is wrong with you? I said. If you don't help me, I'll just say that you kidnapped me 
and made me drive you away because you killed him. But I didn't, I said. Your fingerprints are all over the knife I used to kill him with. But little did she know I was recording our entire conversation. Then I text the cops. When they arrived, I played the recording for them and told them about the body in the trunk. They immediately arrested her and she was sent away to the crazy house. That woman was nuttier than a Snickers candy bar.